A new book explores the history of popular music, taking a closer look at how hit singles evolved into cult classics, why pop music got more pop in the 80s, and how country music became more mainstream. Major Labels covers the seven genres that have defined music in the past 50 years. Rock, R&B, country, punk, hip hop, dance, and pop. Author Kella Fasane joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Hey, I, so are we. We're excited. Has anyone told us they were excited to talk to us before, Larry? This is big news <laughs> for us. Um, I'm setting a record. There we go. Hey, talk about this idea of genres. I always find this interesting how, like, Taylor Swift was a country artist, but now she's pop. And getting put in this lane is, why are labels so interested in putting you in a genre? That's right, and, and a lot of people are skeptical, including musicians and lots of listeners, right, by this idea that everything's got to be labeled, everything's got to be a category. But if you think of genre instead as a slightly pretentious French word for community, then maybe it makes more sense that as listeners and as musicians, we often organize ourselves into communities. So part of the fun of being a country music fan is there are radio stations for you, there are albums for you, you go to concerts, you can be part of that world. And over the last 50 years, a lot of the way we experience music and enjoy music has been by forming these communities, joining these communities, sometimes arguing within these communities, and sometimes leaving these communities, right? That's what people love to do. We love to be part of a group, and we love to explain to everyone else while we're different from everyone else in the group. Here's my question. We mentioned this in the intro a little bit. I remember the B-52s in the late 70s, you know, they were punk. The cars were rock. You get into the 80s and suddenly everything is this watered down pop. Did these artists sell out to make a buck or what, what happened there? And well, is pop well, considered a genre? Well, yeah, I mean, some people do consider pop a genre. And in fact, in the 1980s, some people were concerned for R&B in particular, that some of these R&B singers were selling out and doing whatever it took to make a pop hit. But of course, I'm talking about artists like Prince, artists yeah. like Michael Jackson. We don't think of them as sellouts these days, but at the time, people were a little nervous. Does this hmm. mean R&B is going away because these guys are getting on MTV and making big pop hits? So it's often a bit of both, right? Sometimes we're scared that everyone's dividing up into our own little groups, and sometimes people are, are a little scared by the idea that these groups are dissolving and everything's sort of turning into pop music. I remember, I feel like in the late 70s, you would hear a radio station that would play like Elton John and John Denver and then you'd go into like rock it would all be on the same station and now there yeah. is it is it is it getting back to everything being kind of mixed together again with with you know regular radio going away that's a great question it seems to me like from doing the research over the last 50 years, one of the really interesting and kind of fun things I realized was that there's always this pendulum swing, right? You talk about the 70s, it's also the disco era, right? And everyone is going disco and the Rolling Stones are disco and Star Wars has a disco record. Rod Stewart, Bee Gees, Diana Ross, everyone's together. And then that's followed by an era of backlash, an era of people saying, we don't wanna be pay playing disco, we wanna do something different. It's possible that right now is one of those moments of things coming together, right? It's Post Malone, it's Lil Nas X. Everyone's kind of all mixed up together on the streaming services. And maybe what's going to happen is that 10 years from now, you'll see that backlash. You'll see a whole new generation of musicians and listeners finding ways of saying, I don't want to be like you. I want to be different. Hmm. But, you know, one thing, and I don't know a whole lot about making music, but one of the things we've seen by watching a, a American Idol, uh, that a song can be produced any way you want it. You can make it a rock song, yeah. you can make it a disco yep. song or a pop song. So, again, yeah. are, are we seeing artists like Post Malone consciously saying, I'm going to be more pop so I can make more money, or is it the industry telling, pushing them to, to go down that road? Well, there's always, there's always an, uh, an effect from the industry, right? The industry's always trying to sell us stuff. Um, but one thing I noticed when I started writing about music professionally is that most of the things that the industry tries to do are failures. Most of the artists <laughs> who get all this hype and they're supposed to be the next big thing, it doesn't work out. So often the industry is surprised by what happens. And, and as for the artists, yes, some of them do love the idea of crossing borders and not being part of any genres, but you also see the opposite. You saw that last year when Justin Bieber was nominated for a Grammy in the pop category and he said, wait, no, I want, I thought of my record as R&B. You saw that this year with Casey Musgraves, a country singer who was nominated in the pop category and she was kind of upset. She said, no, I want to be part of this community. I feel like this is my community. Hmm. This is my home. And again, if we think of genres as communities, then it maybe makes sense why artists often want to be in them, 
but often want to set themselves apart from them. Well, again, the book is called Major Labels. You can get more information at Caliphus' website. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you.